So the trailer for The Last of Us Season 2 just dropped, and um, I have some thoughts. Firstly, it looks incredible, and from the very first shot, it really does make you feel like you're back in the world of The Last of Us, and that's really cool. And yeah, it, it, it does look amazing. You see Jackson, and it looks great. Then you see Joel's house, which, I mean, hits really hard for people who have played the games, especially because of... Well, you know, you know that scene where Ellie finds Joel's revolver and sniffs his clothes for some reason? I don't know. There's also this new twist with the infected attacking Jackson, which we didn't see in the game, and it's exciting to see the show add some fresh elements. What does this say? You've got all the fan-favorite characters, Jesse, Dina. Who gives a fuck about Jesse or Dina? Who, nobody care. What, why, why, why is this in my script? I had to write this, like, right now. Why is this, like... Why the hell are they- why? So I'm sure all of you can assume that I went on a bit of a tangent, but anyway, it also shows that take on me moment, and you know, it gives us all the feels and we all start singing. We also get a glimpse of the Seraphites, which does add tension to the trailer, which I thought was cool. There, then there's gunfire, there's infected running everywhere, there's an infected girl crawling out of a box. For some reason, excited to see what that is. Then it just shows chaos and it's it's glorious. Honestly, for like a two minute trailer, it packs a lot. And then there's the music. Throughout the trailer, Future Days by Pearl Jam plays in the background. Now, that's a huge moment for fans of The Last of Us and The Last of Us Part 2 in general, because it's the same song that Joel plays for Ellie at the start of the game. It's one of those moments where you point at your screen like, hey, I know that song. It instantly, it instantly pulls you back into the world of the game, which is phenomenal. Oh, and there's a little Easter egg for the music nerds out there. In Ellie's room, there's Nirvana's In Utero in the background, in all of its glory. As a massive Nirvana fan, I was hyped. In Utero is like my second favorite album of all time, beaten only by Nevermind, Nirvana's second album. Now, this proves a few things. Number one, Ellie has excellent taste. And number two, Nirvana is the best band in the world. Now, Ellie also has Pearl Jam's 10 sitting behind something in the room. Now, Pearl Jam, along with Nirvana, makes sense given the whole Seattle connection. You know, there's big grunge vibes all around. But as cool as all of this stuff that I have mentioned is... There's one very big, weird issue that we really need to talk about. Now, here's where things get a little weird. Future Days, great song, no arguments there, but it was released in 2013. Now, if you have played the games, you know the outbreak happens in 2013. So Joel learning the song at some point makes sense. But in the TV show, they've changed the outbreak date to 2003, which creates a pretty obvious plot hole. The song didn't even exist yet in 2003, so how was Joel going to know it? Question mark? And I know some of you might be thinking, it's just a song, who cares? But the thing is, it matters because The Last of Us games are super detailed about their timeline. In the games, you see the year 2013 pop up everywhere in newspaper clippings, notes, even safe codes. For example, in The Last of Us Part 2, there's a safe puzzle where the code is tied to the Employee of the Month from 2013. A dog, by the way, which is both adorable and a clever little detail. So, when the show shifts the outbreak to 2003, it's like they've broken their own rules. Future Days, which by the way, the title Future Days for this whole thing is really ironic, it didn't exist in 2003, and yet they're using it in the trailer and potentially in the show. And it's not just a background detail, this song is important. Joel's connection to it in the game is meaningful, and he specifically learns it after going to a Pearl Jam concert in 2013. This is established, by the way, this is lore. But how is that going to work in the show if the song doesn't even exist in the timeline they've established? Neil Druckmann, co-creator of the show and the game, well, what am I kidding, you know who Neil Druckmann is, said they changed the outbreak year to 2003 so the show could line up with real time, meaning 
The 20-year gap between the outbreak and when we met, Ellie and Joel, brings us to 2023, matching the year of the show's release. And, like, okay, I get it. It's a neat idea in theory, but in practice it creates weird problems like this. It's almost like they've made this decision without thinking through all the little details that The Last of Us fans obsess over. Like me, that's why I'm making the video. Because now you've got Joel possibly singing a song that doesn't even exist yet in the show's timeline, and if they don't use Future Days in the show, it creates a whole other set of issues. They'd have to change one of the most iconic moments from The Last of Us Part 2, which is something fans would definitely notice and not in a good way. Like, I would be pretty much upset. Because that is one of the... I'm going off script here for this. That is a very important moment in the game. It is the moment that Joel hands her a guitar. And a guitar is such a big theme in the game that it always goes back to that guitar. It's the moment he hands it to her, and it's the first song that he plays for her. It is such an important moment, and it seems kind of sullied by this now. It, it's just really disappointing in a way. Now, don't get me wrong. The show still looks amazing. The cast, the action, the world building, yada, yada, yada. It's all on point. I'm really excited to see how they handle all the new elements, especially the deeper dive into the Seraphites and the WLF conflict. That's something the game didn't fully explore, especially with Isaac's character, so the show has a real opportunity to expand on it. But this whole timeline issue with Future Days just feels like such an avoidable problem. It's like they created a plot hole that didn't need to exist in the first place. Why make things more complicated for yourself? It's the kind of thing where you have to wonder how nobody on the writing team flagged it. Like if I, a guy recording this in a closet so the sound is good, can figure it out, surely they could too, right? Like, right? Like how? Anyway, despite that hiccup, I'm still hyped for season two. Again, as I've mentioned before, the visuals, the tension, the character development, everything, yeah, yeah, yeah. It all looks solid so far. I just hope they find a way to smooth over this little detail, you know, without upsetting fans or creating unnecessary complications, but I don't really see that happening because it's really so far along and it's already been decided, but yeah, there's nothing you can really do, it's just really stupid. And to wrap things up, The Last of Us Part 2 is still the best game ever made. And Nirvana is still the best band of all time. Those are facts, and I won't be taking questions. Mic drop. Hell yeah. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, drop a like, maybe subscribe. I don't care. Just comment, because I love reading your comments and all that. All those shenanigans. I'll see you in the next one. Love you all. Bye. Days of you and me.